easy. Well, we'll have a beer and talk about great, it. Great, great, in about a half hour. <laughs> anyway, um, what is packet telephony? Well, uh, once upon a time, people thought packets were great for data because it was very slow. You went from one node and you verified, and you went to the next right, node. Right. Now, as we start getting higher speed data links, such as links running at one and a half megabits a second, mm -hmm. and if we chop up the voice samples in very small packets, we can create the illusion of a real-time circuit between two people. Right. And I'll have it all done by packet switching. So uh, that's also known as fast packet switching. Now, now that would seem to, to involve more uh, use of bandwidth because now you have not only the, the digitized voice, but you have the, the headers and trailers for the Well, packets. it doesn't take very much extra capacity for the headers and trailers. And uh, yeah, it's used a little bit more, but uh, you gain more. Uh, you, you come out ahead. More circuits by. Well, by the cost of a data transmission coming down and down and down. So. Uh, I mean, you would cut out the silence, right? But I guess you would cut out the anyway, silence, right? right? Well, we. That's one of the tricks, you know. Uh -huh. If you're talking, I'm not talking usually. Right. And that saves fifty percent of the of the channel right there. Mm -hmm. And then there are pauses between utterances. Yes. And that's some more time you save. Uh, and you, you save enough that uh, in, the, uh, in the work that we did together over packet cable, uh -huh. and, uh, one part, which was the packet tax product, right. was based on, on about a four to one voice saving. Uh, yes, and in, in fact, I saw recently that the cable people now are, are saying, why can't we get into telephony? We'd like oh, to bring telephones. Oh, they will be. But uh, well, it's coming. Why couldn't they do it five years ago? Well, it's coming. Everything takes time. Patience, my boy, patience. <laughs> so uh, how did you get the idea for the telebit modem? Well, you know, we uh, modems uh, are great when they work. But yes. there are a lot of rotten phone lines out there. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea was, uh, could we build a modem that was designed for rotten telephone lines instead of good telephone lines. And because uh, there's so many of them, you know, yes, and they right. always come at the wrong time. And they're you know. always cheaper. They're cheaper. So the idea was, well, OK, let's uh, send a whole bunch of signals simultaneously, find out what part of the telephone passband uh, is there, measure its noise, and then send the theoretic amount of energy mm -hmm. in each of those bands. Mm -hmm. uh, and that does two things. First, it gives you a very high data rate. Yes. And secondly, it, it runs through anything you want to throw against it. And the interesting uh -huh. thing is that the telebit modems are doing great in Eastern Europe, where right. they have all these rotten lines oh, and can't use anything course. else. China. Yes. But the kicker for a while has been this equipment couldn't be exported. Mm-hmm. So that seems odd because it's well, just... Well, it, it used a signal processing chip. Oh, I see. Remember a couple of years, a year yeah, or two right. ago, they had all the Cold yeah. War on all that anyway, stuff. Anyway, uh, I wonder... Yeah, well, we had Ted Brown on the show, actually, mm -hmm. a while back, and he showed us that. We actually got to see right at the end of the show a plot of mm -hmm. which frequency bins right. uh, were okay and which ones uh, mm -hmm. weren't. The modem figures that, that out all the time. That's a great modem. Great product. So what is the Metricom system? Metricom system is an interesting one. They're doing very nicely. Uh, they're located over at Campbell, and uh, it's a couple of pieces put together. One is a new electronic meter. You know that meter you have in your house? I mean, power meter. Power meter, that little wheel goes watt, around. Watt meter. It's been, watt hour been meter. designed, it's beautifully designed. It's been working for about 90 years without change. Right. Okay, first thing we do is replace it with all electronic unit, and then we send measurement signals from those meters out over the power lines as little packets. Mm -hmm. And then all the houses on the same transformer we treat as a local area network. Then we have a packet radio that sends signals. And you put that the on city. each transformer? Each each cluster of houses, that's yeah. A, that's a lot of transmitters. Right, there, there's a fair number, and, we, and uh, the guys have learned how to build a network and stable. Mm -hmm. They use frequency hopping, and uh, it's a very robust network, and it permits the electric utilities to uh, uh, save energy. It, uh, it could, permits a much better job of managing their resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are major trials in August. There must be about nine or 10 major utilities now. And uh, it's growing uh, because any energy uh, that can be saved, well, most of the, the problem of electric utilities is a big peak load. Mm -hmm. So this way, you can measure energy at the time of the day. Right. So you can encourage people to use their energy off hours. And that saves the utilities from having to build more capacity. Because? 
Because you have a, a more precise measurement? You, you, know, each, you know when you, you used electricity. I guess you know when each person used yeah, electricity. That's right. You know, I lived in New Zealand for a little bit, uh, right after Packet Technologies, in fact, and uh, they had an odd way to handle things there. They would just, the power company could send a signal down the power line and mm -hmm. turn off your breaker. Yeah, that's so common does that too. <laughs> that's sort of <laughs> Procrustean, right? Yes, but, right. So there's more sophisticated ways of doing yeah. it. And that's the sort of system that, that Metricom has. Well, that sounds, uh, sounds good. Uh, so what about uh, the future? Do you see anything for the future of communications? Oh, gee, it's just beginning. It's uh, just beginning. Just beginning. I was remarking uh, uh, to some of your colleagues uh, for the program that around 1960, it looked at, looked at the future and decided there's about five decimal orders of magnitude of improvement still ahead. And technology's been moving very rapidly, and we still see about the same amount. So the, the tremendous pace of electronics that we see now is continuing so you say and will continue. Five orders of magnitude. I think so. And you think, but that's mostly just uh, quantitative speed up. Well, when you change, any time you change anything quantitatively, mm -hmm. by a factor of ten, you change quality. For example, you walk five miles an hour, automobile goes fifty miles an hour. Mm -hmm an airplane at 500 miles an hour. Right. Just changing speed. Totally right. different concepts. So, same thing with communication. As we go up in our data rates, we'll see all digital television, we'll see tremendous number of channels, uh, high definition television. Interactive television? Interactive. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. So That's coming. Uh, do you think there's a best medium or protocol for communication? No, there's, uh, there's no one best medium. Everything has an ideal place, and uh, it would be like a, a carpenter with uh, just a saw in his toolbox, no hammer, oh, I see. No, I see. no chisel. So I think that uh, when you design communication systems, you want as big a toolbox as you can because every situation is different. So that's why you sort of are a generalist, or keep in touch with all the different uh, parts of the... Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, too. Um, uh, what is Comprint, by the way? This is the one... Well, Comprint was an early, early company, and uh, we made a uh, printer used electroresistive paper. And uh, it was an interesting case that uh, we also had a process for printing uh, on plain paper through mm -hmm. carbon ribbon. But uh, the company found that uh, there's, it had so much business in, in, the, in this silvery paper. Yes. One of the, those are the early printers, right? right? right. That uh, the president decided there's no need to do anything else. Oh, no. <laughs> True story. Oh, well, and it happens all the time. The company time. was doing great. And then it went off the cliff. Closed because the patent. better technology came along and they yeah. didn't follow. Closed the patent office. Huh? Well. Anyway, I guess uh, it's great to have you here. Well, and, it's uh, great being here. And we'd like to have you back sometime. Thank you. Thanks my so pleasure. So, thank you for watching High Tech Heroes. Be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week. Au revoir. So great. So out for pizza and beer. Thank you for joining us this week for High Tech Heroes. Be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week when we will bring you more entertaining information about the people and ideas behind the scenes in high tech industry. And now, this is your announcer, Margie Foote, wishing you the best of luck and a pleasant week. Au revoir. This episode of High Tech Heroes has been made possible in part by grants from Merrick International of Mountain View, California, Linksys Incorporated of West Lafayette, Indiana, 
Kinetic Microscience of San Jose, California. and Cybernetic Arts of Sunnyvale, California.